Today we're talking about wideband, serial, analog, tying it all back into the scanner. So stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Uh, recently I had a gentleman named David leave a nice comment on one of my other posts uh, talking about hooking up his AEM wideband to uh, his data logger using the serial, the 232, as opposed to having the MPVI Pro or the MPVI 2 with the Pro feature set stuff enabled on there. And so this is the way that I run it uh, personally is, is using the base model and then using the serial uh, RS-232. And I'll talk about that in a bit. But first, I want to kind of reiterate some of the ideas that I gave David in case you're running into the issue that he was running into where he was going in, adding the parameter into his PID list, and then whenever he would start logging, it would disappear. I've had this happen in the past. I honestly don't really remember how I got around it. But there's a couple things that you need to do if you are seeing this initially to see if they'll solve it. The first one being, make sure you are running the latest versions of the uh, editor and scanner. Go out to HP Tuners. This thing is updated. The software is updated sometimes daily, but almost weekly. So there is probably a newer version if you haven't downloaded one in the latest week or so. Get, make sure you're on the newest version because there's always revisions that come out that might fix some of these issues that you're having. Uh, the other thing to try is make sure that your Windows is up to date. And if you're on Windows 8, that seems to be where I had the most issues. I went to Windows 10 back whenever it was still free. I've not had any issues with Windows 10. But making sure that your Windows is up to date will make sure that all of the native drivers are up to date because if you are using a serial to USB adapter, which most likely you are unless you have a laptop that's older or is more of an industrial style laptop, if you are having to use a USB serial adapter, you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date native drivers because this will use something like an FTDI driver that, that changes the, the protocol from serial over to a, a digital protocol via USB. So that being said, another thing to try is to reboot the computer with the USB adapter already plugged in. Sometimes I find that if the computer's powered up and the scanner's already open, if I plug into my interface or the, the serial adapter after that fact, it will not log properly. So I try to make sure and plug in everything, the uh, MPVI, my wideband uh, serial adapter, all that stuff before I boot up my, my tuning laptop. Something to think about. So those things out of the way. Uh, here in a second, we'll jump over into the truck. I will show you exactly how all of my stuff's kind of hooked up. I'll have to kind of tear the center console out because my installation's pretty hidden uh, because I leave it hooked up 24 seven. That way, uh, you know, ABT, always be tuning. I can jump in, plug in, go, and, and, and be pulling data logs on the fly, basically. But that being said, I will go over, uh, you know, what gauge I'm using, which is the Wago 30-0300, uh, and then what USB adapter I'm using, because some of the cheaper USB adapters off Amazon might be the issue. So I'll tell you which one I have. That way we have a part number. In fact, down in the description, I will list uh, or put a link directly to the USB adapter I'm using. Uh, and then I'll also put the, uh, a link to the, the website where the spooling up uh, adapter is that, that basically makes it where you just crimp one connection on and then you've got a DB9 for going into your serial adapter. So all that out of the way. Real quick, one of the reasons why I like to tune using the RS-232 serial uh, connection as opposed to a pro with the analog is whenever you are dealing with this, these different uh, kind of systems like this where you have maybe a boost gauge with analog out and a wideband with analog out and stuff like that, you are taking a signal that is an analog signal, bringing it back to a gauge, which then switches it over to a digital signal so it can read on the gauge. Then it takes that signal and flips it back over to an analog signal that you then send out to your scanner which has an analog input, which then has to take it and flip it back over to a digital signal yet again. This connection, this bridge right here between the gauge and the device, that is the most critical one because it is that zero to five or one to five analog signal is the one that is the most susceptible to interference and you know having improper trims. I've been working in precision electronics instrumentation and PLCs for about the last 15 years at this point in time. And so I deal with analog signals every single day of my career. And I can tell you that 
from out of the box, you may have some parameters that they say with this wideband, use these numbers for the zero and span, and that will get you close, but that is not going to be 100% accurate. That is just good enough, as they, they say. Now, whenever you are doing it through the serial RS-232, that what you see on the gauge is the data that you will be getting on there because it is unfiltered digital data as it's being calculated at the gauge itself. Something to keep in mind, and it's a good reason that if you are data logging with a laptop anyways, go ahead and hook up the serial port of it. You know, I wouldn't bother with the analog unless you are doing a lot of on-device logging on the MPVI2 or just the standard MPVI Pro. Uh, so that's kind of my rant about using analog inputs on here. They're great, they accomplish things, you, but unless you have a way to properly scale that analog through that wire, uh, you may be getting a less than ideal signal because a lot of different things can affect it. How you know twisted the wire is, how many twists per foot, uh, if it's shielded, if it's properly grounded on one end, you don't ground on both ends or else you'll get ground loops. Uh, the length of the wire, some of the things that it's ran next to analog is more susceptible to interference from other devices, specifically electronic devices, in which we have a lot of in these vehicles, especially nowadays because there's inverters. If you have an inverter in your vehicle, which takes your 12 volt and outputs 110 like a standard outlet, that thing has so much interference that you are most likely wrecking an analog signal. And that's part of the reason why a lot of these newer systems have moved away from using uh, systems that rely on analog stuff and have gone over to things like the CAN bus and the LAN bus, which are digital communication platforms. That's getting down a completely different rabbit hole. And if you want to hear more about the LAN bus, I'm going to have a lot of videos coming up where we start hacking the LAN bus again, doing some cool stuff. So stick around. But for now, uh, let's jump over to the car. Let's look at how my setup's done. And that might give you some ideas of, uh, you know, kind of what to look out for whenever you're installing one of these wideband gauges. Okay, hopefully you can see all right. It may be a little bit far away. I'll, I'll try and zoom in on here, but as you can see, I've got my center console moved out of the way, and up underneath, I've got a couple devices. For one, I got my MPVI, my standard unit. Uh, the uh, CAN connector, the, the OBD2 port connector, I should say, is I've got it wrapped up. I've got it going to a flat cable with a 90 degree, and then it's connected underneath the dash with a 90 degree. And then same ordeal with the USB. I go straight over to a USB adapter. This thing is a, uh, I don't even know, this is this is a knockoff brand. An ONN 2.0 USB hub. That's something else to keep in mind that I'll touch on here in a second is USB 2.0 versus 3.0. And then down here on this white is uh, cable is my USB adapter, which is a TrendNet TUS9. And then I built my own back shell for my serial. Uh, connector here. So it's just the two wires that you need to hook up back to the gauge that's coming directly off of our air to fuel gauge. So it should be uh, 232. So it's going to be your your uh, communication lines. And they're going into the same USB hub. Both my MPVI and my uh, serial adapter, USB adapter is going into that. And then I've got a cable down here that I've built that's got a nice loom on it. It has uh, an adapter for my Surface Pro. Uh, it's got a headphone adapter so I can actually hook the sound up on my Surface Pro to run through the speakers. It's tied into the center console. And then it's got a USB. I've got a USB uh, A to C adapter on there because my, my laptop only has C. And then of course my uh, Surface Pro that I use to data log with has USB A. Okay, first things first, you need to open up Device Manager and verify that your USB port is showing up uh, to access it. You can just go down to your search bar. If it's in Windows 8, it'll be up in the corner here. Uh, if it is on 10, it'll be down in your bar most likely. Uh, and just type in Device Manager and it will uh, pop this window up. If you go down into Ports, you should have a USB to Serial COM port with a port listed. We're not necessarily worried about which port it is. We just want to make sure it is detected. And uh, some of them you'll be able to go into the properties and actually see some of the uh, port settings. 
Specifically, we want to be 9600 8 none one with no flow control. That is the base communication settings for most 232 ports. Uh, if yours is a 232 485 port, make sure it's set to 232 and not 485 because it won't work in 485. That is a different serial protocol. But double check these settings. And then let's go ahead and kick back over to our scanner. I do not have the PID loaded up right now. I am connected. Let me disconnect to show you. I'm connected up. It's scanning all the PIDs. Let's go in and add. What we need to do is add a channel. And then we've got two sections for external inputs. MPVI Pro is the standard analog inputs. You've got four analogs. Those are A to Ds, which are analog to digital, as I said. It's a zero to five volt input. We're not gonna go into those because we're not doing those. We're using serial ports. So come into the serial port, find your brand. I happen to be using the AEM and I'm doing EQ ratio because I always tune in Lambda. Double click that to get it added. And then we can kick back over and start logging. It's gonna be off. I'm reading 9.9 .9 when it should be 0.99. So what I need to then do is go into it and modify it. So let's transform it. We come in here and do user defined and we want to take our input which is going to be an oxygen sensor equivalence ratio and then the AM 30-4110 works in this situation or the 30 since we're using the 300 the 30-300 I've had luck with both of them double click it and it'll say hey yep we'll use that one then we need to divide it by 10 so let's add a zero in there and that should be it. We're taking the AEM sensor, divided by 10, save it. Now we'll start logging again. And hey, there it's corrected. Now we're reading what we are wanting to read. And that's about all there is. As I said, it's pretty straightforward. If for some reason yours is disappearing, it will disappear whenever you connect to the vehicle. Whenever you do this step, it will go away. It will not be there. So, if that is happening, as I said, try rebooting with your USB plugged in already. Make sure all of your software and things are up to date. And double check those comm settings in Device Manager I talked about. Okay, that's all there is to it. Hopefully, it does answer some of the questions some of you might have about using the serial hookup on these uh, widebands and the uh, HP Tuner scanner. So it's pretty straightforward, as I said, reboot your system with the USB plugged in, make sure everything's up to date, double check your COM port settings. There's nothing that you have to set up in the scanner other than going in and choosing the serial input for the parameters. And then you might have to do the transform like you do on the AEM units to shift the decimal over. But other than that, man, simple, simple, simple. And hopefully, David, this answers your question. If anybody else has any questions, make sure and hit up the comments. I will get back to you if it's a big enough question that might uh, affect some other people. I'll try to even make a video like this for it. So uh, as always, subscribe if you haven't already. For those that have, thank you so much. Hit the thumbs up while you're here. Leave me a comment. Uh, once again, everybody, thanks for stopping by the garage.